In this video guys, I will show you the best CS2 settings that can help you to improve your gaming experience. I will also guide you what each setting actually do. So guys, hit the like button, make sure to subscribe, let's get started. The Gear Up Booster application is a powerful tool designed to help you achieve zero ping and maximum FPS. Download the application for free using the provided link in description. Select the CS2 game and click the boost button. This will initiate the network optimization process, selecting the best routing settings for you automatically. Download it now. When it comes to aspect ratio and resolution, it often boils down to personal preference, but there's more to consider. Around 85% of professional players use a 4.3 aspect ratio, with 55% specifically opting for 1280x960 stretched. These settings come with a slight drawback because they crop the edges of your screen. To be fair, if someone is on the edge of your screen, you're likely already in trouble. But there are scenarios where this limitation could hurt your performance. A big reason for these settings is comfort, as most pros have used them for years. However, the stretched resolution also makes enemies appear larger, which is probably why it's so popular. On the flip side, stretching the screen horizontally makes players look like they're moving at super fast speeds, which is why I personally prefer 16.9. Interestingly, most pros don't use the highest resolution available. You might think this is to boost FPS, and while it can help a bit on some PCs, my testing shows it doesn't make a huge difference. What it does do is reduce clutter, making the game feel cleaner and improving visibility, which helps minimize distractions. If you're switching from another game and have a decent PC, starting with 1920x1080 is a solid choice. That said, there's no harm in experimenting with stretched resolutions if you feel it might give you an edge. When it comes to settings, there are a few commands that might seem new and confusing, but can make a significant difference in gameplay. I've done a lot of testing to give you a clear idea of which ones to use. To begin with, V-Sync should always be turned off, and boost player contrast might seem like it's worth enabling. While it does help slightly, it also reduces FPS and isn't highly noticeable, which is why many pros leave it off. Personally, I keep it on, but it's not a major factor either way. One key thing to remember in CS2 is that having settings too low can make it hard to spot enemies, so maintaining good visual clarity is important. MSAA is one of the settings that impact clarity. If you're playing close to your native resolution, you can turn it off to save FPS. However, if you're playing at a much lower resolution, using CMAA2 doesn't seem to have a big impact on FPS and can enhance visual clarity slightly. One of the trickiest settings is Global Shadows. Even though it's one of the most FPS intensive options, it's not just about clarity, it directly affects gameplay. If you set it to low, shadows will disappear entirely. On medium, shadows begin to vanish at longer distances, which is why most pros keep it on high or very high. That said, there's a current workaround that allows you to keep this setting on low for better FPS while retaining shadows by tweaking certain files in your Steam user folder. I'll explain how to do this later in the video, but be aware that this trick might not work forever. The next two settings, model detail and texture filtering, are mostly based on personal preference and visual clarity. However, if you've ever noticed a weird effect when headshotting someone, it might be because your model detail is set to low. After testing on two different PCs, I found that setting model detail to medium actually gave me slightly better FPS, so it's a simple setting to keep on medium. You'll also notice that many pros use this setting for better visual clarity. As for texture filtering, I've consistently observed lower FPS with bilinear filtering compared to other options, so I would recommend using the highest setting, Anisotropic 16X. While my testing might not have been perfect, the impact on FPS will likely be minimal unless you're using an outdated PC from the 90s. When it comes to shader and particle detail, in CSGO, players often kept these settings on high to see through Molotov flames a bit better. However, in CS2, the Molotov and grenade smoke have been adjusted, and I honestly can't notice any difference. Both settings seem to work best on low. Lastly, ambient occlusion might seem confusing, but it can actually add extra shadows on some walls where there wouldn't normally be any. You can even see this in the settings menu, as shown on the wall here. This effect also plays a role in real games, so it's a good idea to keep it at least on medium for the best results. HDR might not seem to make much of a difference at first, 
but many players have reported issues with graininess in CS2. Enabling HDR quality can help reduce this effect significantly, making the game look cleaner and smoother. The last two settings are a bit more controversial. Fidelity Super Resolution FSR, depends heavily on your PC and the resolution you're playing at. If you're close to native resolution, this setting can significantly improve FPS without noticeably affecting visual clarity. In this case, leaving it on balanced or quality is a good option. However, if you're playing at a lower resolution like 1288x960, setting FSR to low can negatively affect visibility. Increasing it won't impact FPS much. So many pros choose to disable it to keep their visibility clear. NVIDIA Reflex is a setting that's a bit harder to evaluate, but generally it doesn't seem to have a huge impact on performance. I personally keep it enabled as it's not likely to hurt FPS. You can also try the Enabled Plus Boost option, which seems to work best on stronger systems. For now, I stick with just Enabled, as it works well without overloading my system. So guys, that was today's video. Hit the like button, make sure to subscribe. Bye.